Hello, welcome to the uh, stream today. Um, not normally the time that I normally stream. Normally I stream on a Tuesday between 6 and 8. Um, but at the moment I'm in my home working from home, so I thought I'd stream on the Monday. Don't like to stream on the Monday night because uh, I normally host Level 23's gaming show. Um, but today we're just going to be doing more 3D work. Um, I managed to find a solution for the sphere which was great. Um, it's actually quite a simple solution, um, but yeah. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna carry on modeling. So if you're in the chat, drop me questions, ask me anything that you want. Um, probably a lot of my students are gonna be in there, so feel free to, to comment and that sort of stuff. Um, and yeah, well, I'm just gonna get really into it. So uh, yeah, let's get started on this stuff. So let me just sort out the... Um, Put the music back on a bit. Do tell me if the music's a bit too loud or anything like that throughout the stream. Um, yeah. So I know last time we I left it. I know I wasn't here last week. I was not very well. Um, I've had quite a bad chest infection for the last two weeks, um, and I'm on antibiotics and a ventilator at the moment. But yeah, so I'm I'm doing a lot better than I was. Uh, no, it's not Corona, um, but yeah, so last week I couldn't do it, I just couldn't, I was just not very well at all, um, but yeah, so we did start off UV in this, and I think we got quite a little, something doesn't look like it's gone right there, so we didn't get that UV'd, that's UV'd, it's not UV'd yet, and this one. But yeah, so the problem we were having last week was the, the map that I was using as well wasn't the greatest. And to be fair, this isn't the greatest either. I'm probably actually going to get Holly, our concept artist, to uh, draw me an old vintage map to wrap around, around this. But for testing purposes, this is fine. What I'll do is, at a later stage, when she's a little bit more free, because at the moment she's got more priority stuff to do, um, I will get her to do some paintings and that sort of stuff. So we just kept the original... UV layout because it actually looks not too bad <coughs> so yeah so we'll just UV this one so I'm just gonna grab my automatic map uh, okay and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut this and then I'm gonna grab. Ooh, what are you? What's up with you? What's up with you? Okay. I'm gonna cut that. So you can always tell when something's wrong. Uh, yeah, I don't want those. Oh, hello, why are you all... Okay, let's cut. I'm gonna select the edge ring, and then I'm gonna sew these back together, like so. And I'm gonna stitch that, stitch that, and then again, I'm gonna grab the edges to edge ring. I'm pressing control here when I do that. It honestly depends, like we were trying on the last stream, if you look back on the old streams um, thingy, we were trying to do spherical mapping, it just wasn't working with the texture. Luckily with this texture, because if you look at the actual texture itself, you'll see that it's square. So we can kind of get away with just using this kind of base thing. Now we could, if you wanted to unfold it, kind of relaxes it a little bit. And if we actually um, undo that, and if I, so this may completely go wrong, so I might have to revert this. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that. So yeah. 
we try I tried a load of stuff and it just didn't want to work to be fair so I got around with this now eyes for example an eye all you've got is the front bit of an eye that's got the detail so what you could do is a plain RUV from the front and that would fix it you would get a nice perfect UV around the eye um, same with simple textures as well if like you had just like a smiley face on the front like it was a bouncy ball then you could get away with doing a planar map from the front and then the planar map from the back and just having simple colors on it for this because it needs to wrap around i've had to just leave it with this uv it's, it's dirty but it works and i think a lot of the time that that seems to be the case when you're doing 3d stuff is just if it works it works just do it um but yeah hey angel of death Uh, where were we? We're doing this one, aren't we? Whatever works. And what I can do, and I'm just pressing Control, right mouse button to get these menus up. So you'll notice a lot, oh, entirely how I work is marking menus. I don't go into any of these menus. I haven't done for a long time, it's just quicker. And I'll just unfold that a little bit just to be a bit more things. No worries. That's what I'm here for. I think. Again, I'm just going to cut this because if I try and do a, a grab the whole edge, it's going to screw up a little bit. So it's just easier to do this. And then I can grab this edge, this edge, stitch. I can grab that edge that edge and so unfold what I've reset the category um, I don't know why it's coming up I, I was I was testing my Elgato streaming um, HD capture card the other day to see if I could capture some footage of uh, Call of Duty Battle Royale and um, it must have not updated itself, even though I told it to. So let's go over here. I don't know how you change it though. What? Uh, how do you change it? That would be an awesome thingy. Uh, create a dashboard. That's brilliant. Uh, anybody got an idea on how to change this? It's not a cool looking globe. I, I think it'll look cooler when we've got some textures on it and um, I get Holly to do a custom like world map for me. But at the moment I'm just using some random one I found off the internet to do the texture for it. Um, Edit stream info. Done. There we go. Gonna come off there. Go back to my stream labs. Sorry about that. I did not. I'm guessing there's maybe a few people from Call of Duty fan base came along and thought, oh, he's playing. No, he's not playing Call of Duty. Sorry. Sorry to disappoint. Okay, so the thing that I'm gonna do with this is, is I'm gonna stack these. This is what I love about Maya's UV tools because I can make them all the same distance. So they're roughly about that size, <clears throat> maybe a little bit, probably about there. And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna grab the edge, and again, I'm just gonna find, and then stitch. And it just means, ooh, what is up with you? Why didn't you like that?
Ah, that's why. Ignore me. Okay, and stitch. Now the only issue is that that's a very big UV. So trying to fit that onto a UV sheet is not gonna be that easy. So the other solution would be is to do this. So it's to cut that and actually is this the top one? Yeah. Stitch and stitch. Now we might get some stretching, but it might be so minuscule um, that we can get away with it. I'm just going to unfold this just so it's got a thingy. There you go. I mean, it's not the the the, the most ideal, but it, it kind of works and you don't get too much stretching. And also you don't get these long, thin UV sheet islands that are just going to cause so much issue when you kind of do a UV layout. There you go. Ah, cool. So next thing. <coughs> oh. Yeah, you probably can hear the cough. Yeah, I've had this for about two weeks now. Um, now people who've looked at me thinking I've got coronavirus. Hey ho. We're getting over it. Well, I'm getting over the cough. Okay, so let's see if this goes all the way around. That's good. Again, we're just going to do the same because it's just easier. So we're just going to cut and stitch. Do the same here. So rinse and repeat. So going to unfold. Again, I've got a slight issue here, so I'm just going to cut this out and then control right mouse button. That's all I'm doing to bring this up and then control shift to bring the uh, tools up. Oh, hello. What are you doing? So that means there's a problem. There we go. It's because I was selecting that whole UV island, which you just didn't like at all. Uh, again, let's just grab these two edges. Control, two edge, two edge ring. So, there you go. Uh, unfold as well just relaxes it basically um, and yeah what else right I gotta fix this problem don't know this had a nice hissy fit it it, it was UV'd that was the thing I th I'm sure I UV'd it I might have to go back and look in my thing uh, stream but yeah I'm sure I UV'd the damn thing right anyway let's start with the top it's easiest to start with the top so I'm just gonna cut that grab the edges and so and if you double click on a, a UV island that basically allows you to select the whole thing so whether it's face edge only allows you to select in that edge loop which is attached but if I select UVs and double click it allows you to select all of them basically okay okay so I've got that I'm happy with that it's my top bit Oh, actually, I don't know because I didn't delete that bottom bit. I don't know. Anyway, let's grab the faces. Uh, let's cut. Let's stitch this back together. My computer is so much faster. Yay. Oh, it was dying. Okay, and then I'm just gonna um, unfold and then start again, stitch. Now what I could do is this. I am doing it the most stupidest way and I hit stitch. 
might take a little bit longer, but it does it all in one. I do apologize about the fan. Laptop is good, but it does need a lot of uh, cooling. Um, it's running a GTX RTX 2070. Um, so yeah, so the fan might scale up and it might scale down depending on what I'm doing, which is which is brilliant because that's really cool. Uh, and then let's grab these uh, edges. So, um, and then we'll unfold them. There you go. There you go. Nice, clean. Um, yeah. Oh, you stupid. Yeah, I knew there was a reason why we kept bomb because I wanted it. Uh, no, I think we'll leave it because we're not going to see the bottom of it. Like, that's the angle you're going to see it from. So, there's no point keeping that bottom set of uh, things in. So now, I'm going to connect these two together because this is an actual piece. So combine. And then I'm just going to rotate them around. Now, there is a reason, let me just hide Bob 2.0. There is a reason why we, um, uh, let me hide that. Right, I think we're on the center, yeah. So if I grab this and move that to the center, if we do a control D and then I'm gonna hold J and snap rotate, I can duplicate this item around the center pivot. You can do this with anything. And it just means that you've, you've got it in place. Now, there's no point modeling one of these and then duplicating it around and then you have to UV all of them. Like just model, UV, duplicate. It's easier to post stuff after you've UV'd it than it is before UV. And so just think of it as Lego and uh, connects and that sort of stuff. So I think that's it. The only thing we need to do now is to make sure these are all on the same UV sheets. Because at the moment they're all over the place and we don't have the same textile density across the whole whole uh, model so we're just going to go into transform and <coughs> oh pardon, sorry set to 78 so now they're all using the same textile density so all these squares are the same size as you can see here now the importance of that is just so that if you're doing scratches it looks uniformed and that sort of stuff and it's not you haven't got like one massive scratch on a little bit and then like it looks like that and that sort of stuff so yeah mm. if you're new to the chat like draw a, drop a message and stuff like that all that social media stuff um i did get a few new followers actually um so I don't know, AEXUNT has followed. I don't know whether it popped up on my video. It should do. I've got an alert box. Sorry if it didn't. Um, Ace Pirate Captain, Alexandra, Hippo Tank, um, all followed in the last couple of minutes, well, last hour or so. Um, so yeah. Right, I think we should be sorted now. Okay, we're still not on the same UV sheet, so what we're gonna do is we're going to do a layout and I'm going to use unfold 3d I'm going to make sure shell padding is set to five click apply now the only issue with this is that it's now created all this um, unnecessary space because of because of the circles I'm just wondering if there's a better way of doing this where I'm not losing all this like textile density because if you look at the these now so we might have to do this ourselves so what about if I take these let's do a layout Ah, 
I'm happy with this. Okay. Oh, what's up with you? Where are you? You're down here somewhere. Let's fix you first. Okay, now let's... What are you? Okay, you need to stay in there a little bit. Okay, so let's grab this. Let's just scale these down. I don't normally like doing this, but that UV sheet was not great. sometimes you do you just have to kind of build it yourself and not rely on the um, it's gonna make that slightly smaller just so I can get that in okay now our next phase is I'm just gonna group this group this and bring up the uh, content group so I can see all of it um, so these are going to have to be smaller. I think I accidentally left the same playlist on yes. That would help if I change the music a little bit. Oh, what do you want? Um, these are the uh, these are the options. No, no, it won't let me move it. Great. Uh, epic. There's a playlist called um, Happy. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's do that again. I'm just putting them all in uh, like a stack at the moment so that I can work better with them. Okay, so I know these have all got to be scaled uniformly because they're the same item here, so that's one thing you don't want to do. I think this might work, you know. That's probably going to be better if it's like that. And there we go. Haha. <laughs> Still got quite a bit of room. I'm holding shift when I'm double clicking on this to get multiple ones. Okay, so that's pro that is a lot better layout in terms of um, uh, than the automatic layout. Yes, we've had to play around with some of the sizes, and I mean, some of these we can make a little bit bigger if need be. Be quite generous with the space. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. Yep, cool. So now we can 
I'm going to call this globe. Uh, I'm going to... Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all these because I don't need them anymore. You're not needed. Okay. And then I'm just going to grab this and I'm going to create a LP. Duplicate it. IP. Actually, let's, no. let's name things first. So these are chair legs. So these can all be one uh, mesh. So combine. I'm happy with that freeze. I'm going to put, uh, uh, what was this? Um, globe legs underscore low. You know, you understand why I'm naming these differently in a minute. So, uh, Okay, and then I'm just going to duplicate this and call these differently. So I'm just going to put high, and what you can do is you can copy this and then just paste it. So yeah, but they're the name the same. So basically when we export this, into Substance Painter, it will recognize if there's any high, if we're baking any high poly, it will recognize the names basically, and you get a better bake 99% of the time if you do it this way. But anyway, so let's have a look at this. Okay, I don't think we're going to need to high poly this, but maybe. So we could sub D this. Uh, I think I am going to. Uh, I'm just going to turn off this. And now, with sub D, you want to get the hard points. And this is throw. It's called throwaway modeling because we don't actually use it other than to do this. So if we just hide that and bring the low poly back up. See, we get these hard edges, but if we, we could soften those quite easily. And it's the same with these things as well. So um, we're not obviously gonna, if we try and, if I try and sub D this now, so if I press three on the keyboard, that's gonna happen, which is not what we want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna extract these. Uh, where are you? Separate, not extract. Extract, you would have to grab the faces. Um, but this is um, separate, so you separate them, them out, basically. All I'm doing is holding shift and accessing all these menus. So if we've got an object selected, hold shift, right mouse button. Okay, right mouse button allows me to do selection views. Control lets me to do... Um, so I can select multiple things. 
a cool thing I didn't know, and Holly showed me, and he sh she showed the master students the other week, was tab allows you to drag select or isolate stuff like that. I did not know that. Uh, thank you, Holly. Uh, you you always learning, no matter. I've been doing this since 2008, and you're always learning. Anyway, so again, there's no point me doing all three. So I can get rid of all of these. I'm just gonna get rid of them. Now I'm gonna keep these. Um, because I want to I want to try something. Um, but we'll try in a minute. So yeah. So. If I do three on the keyboard and start to bring in some edge loops where I want the hard edges, I can start to give this some kind of definition. I'm going to put one here. And you do this by either looking at reference or it kind of comes naturally once you've done it a million times. Don't do that. You kind of get a feel for where you need to put the um, hard edges, especially on 90 degrees. Like here, here. I'm just toggling it on and off with um, uh, three, three and one. And it doesn't matter that the poly count is going to jump so high on this because all we're using this for is just baking, that's it. We're not doing it for anything else. Um, how is everybody in the chat? Anybody working on some cool stuff at the moment or are you just playing games? What's going on? I've been playing the new Call of Duty Battle Royale. Got, got, got my first win the other day with uh, Jack. Uh, one of my friends. Uh, okay, yeah, so there you go. You can see how it's now, you've got these nice hard ed edges. But the actual detail on it, I mean, it's 42,000, so this is gonna be quite expensive, but we're not gonna use it, it's not gonna be mod, it's, we're just baking detail, that's all we're doing when we're doing normal mapping. Uh, this, for example, I wanted to try something, so. This may work, this may not. This may not look good, um, so we may have to go back to the drawing board on it, but it's it's about experimentation and just seeing seeing what works and what doesn't. Now you could just bevel the low poly and that'd be fine because the amount of like polys this is producing is very minimal. Well, I wanna see if we can get away with actually having a 90 degree and having this bevel in just to give the illusion because how small that is on screen, it's like here. Yeah, so it's it's not that thingy. So I'm, I'm testing, I'm giving it a bit of an experiment here. And it may be too big of a bevel, so we may have to go back to the drawing board. So let's change the bevel to like a 0.1, 0.05, 0. 0.05, 0. 0.02, yeah, 0.03, there we go. Just kind of add that. So this is ready to go, so we can get rid of these now. Get rid of these. And again, I'm just gonna I'm gonna modify this. So modify convert smooth mesh preview. I'm just gonna combine these. <coughs> oh, sorry. Oh. Again, just gonna move this to the center and duplicate it around. Control D. I'm 
I'm still talking, right? Yeah, cool. That's good. I'm just going to make sure I call these correct. So these are the legs. And just call it high. Grab that in. Just make sure it's named the correct one like that. Okay. Don't need to do anything with that, but I do need to keep it in because what we need is we still need it to bake. So we still need that kind of AO and stuff like that. So we keep that in. Um, although saying that I could, I could do that. Let's do that. What's the harm? Bake times. That's definitely the harm is bigger bake times, but we'll deal with it. And all I'm doing is just putting supporting line geometry in there so that when I do soften it, it doesn't just become one soft mess, basically. Again, it doesn't matter about size on this. Uh, let me just um, modify this. So, right, convert. Again, it's like 30,000, that's fine. Um, same with this one. Though I'm not gonna bevel the these bits here. I'm just gonna put the lines in. Do I have to say your name? Hi, poo student. <laughs> yeah, I managed to get it UV'd. The I mean, the texture we were using on the last stream wasn't the greatest. And using just a basic standard um, without even trying to UV it, just basically, I'll show you now. Uh, there you go. By just using this standard one, it seems to have worked for this one. Um, yeah. I was saying earlier that I'm probably going to get um, fixed non-manifold geometry. There's an easy way is to um, maybe not grab the high poly. Um, say this has got non-manifold. Actually, this one hasn't got man manifold geometry. Shift right mouse button, clean up. And if you select matching polygons, um, sorry, clean up matching polygons and select non-manifold geometry and click apply That will fix it The only issue is it may screw up your UVs um, So yeah, so you just have to be careful, but yeah, that will fix it pretty much 90% of the time um, That tool is brilliant by the way um, clean up so if you go, say, faces with more than four sides. It's going to tell you, if you go select matching polygon, it's going to tell you where you've got those problems, those angons, which we don't want. Angons are bad. We want things to be three-sided or four-sided because in the engine, the engine is going to triangulate this for you. Now, one thing I would say, if anybody's tuning in, when you export, don't tick triangulate. You want to keep the FBXs quite um, clean uh, because if you give it to someone else or you send it over, someone else pulls your FBX and you've triangulated it, it's so hard to fix that you may as well just start again. So when you export your FBXs, make sure that triangulation is off because it's going to do it automatically in the engine. The engine's already built that way that the automatically in import will... Um, triangulate your meshes, your objects. So just do it in the engine, not in the FBX export. Or the experience I've had with engines do it, so yeah. 
But yeah, that's how you get non-manifold to clean it up. Uh, what was it doing? All right. Um, okay, let's let's do this one. I'm just going to isolate this. Oh, let me have a look at that last line I did. Oh, that's horrible. That is horrible. Don't do that, Matt. That's bad. There we go. That's fine. That's better. Okay, I'm just going to modify. As you can see, I am not bothered about the polycarbonate. That's because I'm going to get rid of most of this anyway. So, yep. Oh, we're having more people joining. That's good. If you're new to, new to the channel, Say hello, say hello in chat. No one bites, I don't think. And I think we're nearly there. Yep. There we go. Last one. Now I am going to... Um, I am going to do that because I do want to add a bit of uh, E in there. Okay, so I've got my high poly, um, I've got my low poly. Um, so I think it's about time I bring it inside of. Uh, uh, what's the difference between the Legacy and the Unfold 3D? Um, Unfold 3D does work more on, it won't work if non manifold geometry is present. It's one of the big things. Um, it's just, it lays out the UV smarter, basically. Um, Unfold 3D, I think, I don't know when it came into play, um, but it gives you more options in terms of um, the this bit here, the layout settings, uh, also the packing, and it also allows you to fix non-manifold geometry as well. Whereas Legacy kind of just I still use Legacy. Um, one thing Legacy is good for is light maps. So, um, if you've got you, if you need to set out your light maps for uh, Unreal, and you're using a calculation of one two eight um, one divided by one two eight, which is zero point zero zero seven eight one two five, um, setting this up as one two eight will give you that uh, packing distance that you need. Um, this just it seems to be 10 times better basically uh, the only time it breaks is if there's uh, non-manifold geometry in there which you can fix either by using this but I tend to use the um, cleanup tool before I get to this stage um, this as well allows you to do shell pad padding which is good and it's you can do it by pixels instead of UVs as well and texture map size you can do whatever you want you could do it in that one I think legacy there you go use a 2048 just efficiency it works a lot better than legacy but they kept legacy in because i think they know a lot of people use that for light map uh, packing and that sort of stuff so i think it's still in there because of that basically okay next stage so i've got my low poly got it uv'd i've got my high poly which has got all the detail um i am just gonna 
center this. Same with the high poly, uh, low poly. I'm holding X to do that, which is brilliant. What is all these? Let's get rid of them. Okay. So let's export the low poly. Now the low poly can be exported as one whole mesh, but it's gonna recognize that it's, it's in a group like this. So if we grab the low poly mesh, uh, group here and go history freeze, export. Uh, I'm gonna just create a new folder. Let me you know, globe. And I'm gonna call this um, globe underscore low. And then I'm gonna export these individually because we're gonna actually load these into substance as an individual thing. Now the difference with these is that the textures are different on the globe. So I'm using two materials inside of um, Maya here. And what that will do is, if I just close that down, what that will do is it's gonna give us two um, materials to work with inside of Substance. So if I just have a look at this. That's using Fong 1, that's fine. This is using a world map. So it gives us two slots inside of Substance that we can work with because we're not actually gonna use, um, this sphere's got its own material basically. And the reason for that is because I just need resolution in there. So if I hide those, go back to the thingy, and I'm gonna export these. I'm just gonna copy the names so that I know what they are when I export them in. Very chilled out music today. Okay. So I think that's it now. So let's open up Substance Painter. Okay, so I'm gonna open up a new project. Yeah, that's fine, that's fine. Go, uh, where's my, so old Maya Cenotaph. I always use the Maya um, folder structure because it's just so much easier to navigate and it's universal as well. So you should be using that if you're using Maya. Um, where are you? Globe and globe blue. Click OK. This should come in all right. And as you can see, we've now got two um, texture maps. So I'm just gonna rename the first one to uh, globe uh, structure. Uh, I'm, actually, I'm just gonna call it globe. That's all it needs to be. And I'm gonna call this to um, globe map. Because we know then it's globe map and globe so so we can just work on that um so i think everything's coming fine oh what is up with you okay this is not right i've got a plan i know why this is i think me and holly encountered this the other week so if we just fix this, because they're not combined, as in they're not merged, the verts, I don't think. I 
Now that means we need to change um, the high poly stuff in a minute. I'll fix that if this is the problem. music I edit uh, and I go away edit project configuration and let's just reselect that Did that work no how did we fix that the other week Right, that's fine. It's just these. Why don't you want to work? What is up with you? This is where we watch Matt try and figure out this problem. Now if I uh, do this. If I do it as an export. No, that's not going to work. It's not more. Yeah, no, it's not the soften issue because um, that was, it wasn't that. It was for some reason like, oh, please don't tell me this. This is the case, I'm gonna cry because that's just, no. No, at least that didn't screw up. All right, okay. Uh, at least that's not the problem. Or else that was going to be a lot of. Oh, grab the hardened edges. Uh, Mesh display on mark. Okay, this is going to be a lot of back and forth, so uh, this might not be interesting. Do apologize. No, 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 no. Why don't you want to work? Everything else is working. Um, I mean, I could bring it in. Could I bring it in as an OBJ? I mean, it'll work if I do this. So, um, globe, loam, uh, smoothing materials. 
Yeah, okay. That works fine because it's an OBJ. Um, that's a temporary fix. There was another fix that me and Holly found and when she's finished teaching. Yeah, I know. Um, we were trying it with her gypsy wagon a couple of weeks ago. Actually, I say a couple of weeks, a couple of months ago. And um, yeah, we just couldn't get it to work. But I don't know. I don't know why it's, why it's doing that. But as an OBJ, it will work basically. So you can, you can ex bring it in as an OBJ and it should work. It should keep the the naming convention as well. Um, the only issue I've got now is that I need to fix um, this. Yeah. Um, so let me let me put these back together. Uh, and these could these are called yeah. Put that back in. These things. They're here to test you. <laughs> Definitely. Um, next phase would be me going onto Google and trying to figure out uh, figure it out from forum posts and that sort of stuff. So even even using this piece of software for like a lot of the stuff since two thousand eight. I still need to go on myself and look for, on Google to see if, if something's going wrong and that sort of stuff. So yeah. Oh, that's not good. What's going on with that now? Oh, one problem after another. Uh, That's fine, it's not back face. Okay, let's go into the actual file itself. I'm gonna let's get rid of those so I can see. All right, let's try this again, shall we? And there we go, I fixed it. <coughs> I just probably using the wrong uh, file there, but hey, oh, it's all fixed. Everybody's happy. And there we go. Right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna do the baking for this. So edit bake mesh maps. Now I don't need an ID map, so we can get rid of that. Um, and with the normal, we're gonna set the anti-aliasing to none at the moment, because I wanna do a test bake. No point uh, wasting the resources on it. Uh, by mesh name, so match by mesh name. And then we're gonna add these high poly, minus that one, click it open. Because at the moment, oh no. Okay. It's an easy fix, it's an easy fix, it's an easy fix. Uh, 
globe. Okay, there we go. So yeah, we've got this, we've got this all sorted. That's cool. Um, that was a quick fix quite easily. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna bake for the support structures first, um, and then we can bake the globe. So bake mesh maps, get rid of the ID, by mesh name, it's fine. And let's just add the meshes in. So I'm not gonna bake the globe high um, because that's on a different texture set. So we'll do that in a minute. Um, and let's just bake uh, the normal first. So let's give this a go. Let's have a look. Uh, Okay, so nothing baked. Hmm. It's interesting. What is going on today? It's one of those days. Okay, screw it. These are all the right names. So globe, globe high, globe yeah, globe base, globe base, globe base drop high, globe mount top high, high. Globe mount, globe feet. Okay, let's give that another go. So let's uh, let's rename that to low. Okay, let's give this another go. This is why it's good to just bake one texture map. All right, still not wanting to do it. Could be that it's an OBJ. There you go. Right, so if you want to do it this way, um, you can't use the uh, OBJ. That's a shame, um, but it seems to have fixed the issue. Let's have a look at the damage. No. It's looking all right, you know, that, that's worked. Yeah, that's what we wanted. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna fix some of this because we don't need an ID map. Uh, and we're gonna change the anti-alias into sub there. That's fine. Uh, click. And I'm just gonna call this uh, globe. And gonna call this one globe map. There you go. Uh, bake mesh. ID, yes. 
and here is an op by mesh name. Yep, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Duh. I hate that. I hate it. I hate it when that happens. But it's worked, so there we go. My computer's just having a little bit of uh, stream. Stream might go juttery. There we go. There we go. And there we go. We've got our bake. We've got this nice, the nice edges. As you can see here, uh, we've got all the uh, the fake bevel, uh, which actually is not beveled. That's ninety degree angles. Um, so yeah, so we've got this that kind of nice uh, thingy. The only issue we've got is this. Hmm. It's a bit of. I think I might know how to fix that. I've got an idea. We'll fix that in a bit anyway um, on that one. But yeah, so we've we've got this. So I can now do that with the globe map. So I can bake a mesh map. Let's just get rid of all these. Uh, globe high. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, globe map mesh. Ooh, bit of uplifting music. It's a bit. Okay, so click that. There we go. We get a nice uh, thingy on that. Okay, <coughs> so I need to start actually um, texturing this now. So uh, let's have a look at the layers. Um, what was the? Let me have a look at the reference. That's not good. My Padlet's saying it's got no. Holly, did you delete all the reference images on Cenotaph? I think all my reference images have gone from Cenotaph wall. That's not good. Yeah, that's not really good. Oh, okay. Right, anyway. Um... forgot what the reference was for this now because I cannot find it on Padlet. Padlet's decided to go, yep, no, nope, there's nothing in here. You haven't uh, used anything. It's like, great, thanks for that. Right. That's great. That's, that, that's perfect. Okay, we'll go off something like this just for the time being. But yeah, that that's disappointing. That is really disappointing. Nothing's going my way today for this. Anyway, uh, let's go smart materials. Uh, I've already got a Victorian wood. <clears throat> yeah, coming straight out of the bat, that's not looking too bad. Uh, I'm going to add a black mask to this. Um, actually, I'm going to add a white mask. And then I'm going to grab this. And... Yeah, I know. I don't know what's going on. They just don't want to do it, uh, load it up for some reason. Um... 
And I'm just going to mass this bit out wherever it is. What that's doing is it's just going to give me... Because I want that to be metal um, on there, so yeah. Now, ooh. Okay. I'm going to just uh, try something. That's off, isn't it? Okay, so I'm going to fix this edge issue, and then I'm actually going to put an edge loop here and an edge loop here. And the reason for that is that I could then have a metal rim going around it, and it might look all right. So let's... Get rid of this. Got an itch on the uh, on my nose. It's gonna take a while. <laughs> Matt, you absolute idiot. Just delete the edges. Okay, so we got that. Now we could go in every other as well. This is just saving polys. Nah, let's not do that. That's not gonna look right. Okay, so... Um, and it's the same with this one as well. The edge is so minuscule that there's no point in having it. It is actually causing some uh, bake issues. I know we could probably get away with that. Um, put this on the hair. Harden edge. Okay. So what was I looking at? Ah, yes, that's what I was going to do. Let's add this is by guesswork here. Uh, let's bring this back in. Now we may need to um, re uh, bait the meshes for this, but then that should that should work. Uh, let me just grab the cenotaph project desktop. Uh,
Yeah. Oh, we're just gonna have to re UV those. There's no way around it. I think there's a plane flying overhead. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, we just have to rebate these. Okay, bake. Uh, yep, that's fine. Okay, click OK. Okay, that should be fixed now. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this metal that I've made. Uh, ignoring, it still looks cool with it anyway, but uh, let's let add a black mask. And what I'm going to do is I'm just changing it from um, black and white by pressing X, and that changes it. I'm just holding left click as well to kind of drag on here. And that's why I like having the uh, UV editor out, uh, the UV um, view here, is so that I can actually do this. So that's...
all I'm just doing is just unmasking. And I can just unmask that. That doesn't matter because that is I actually need that doing so oh, I can actually just select the whole one and there we go. Now I'm probably gonna have to turn down some of this damage because I think that's a bit too extreme but if we have a look at it now okay we've got a few pieces here that still don't still need it So we got that. Now I'm going to make this a little bit more interesting because at the moment it, it doesn't seem that great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the high poly and make some indents so it kind of goes in so it feels like this kind of like a metal metal rim there. Um, and then also change the um, thingy on that. So let's um, duplicate this, bring it down, let's hide that. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that. So what I can do is grab the edges and go to edge ring, edge ring, and then control right mouse button. And I can go to face to face and I can extrude slightly down like that. I don't need too much of a lip and then I'm obviously not going to do it on the bottom side but the top side yes again the only issue is that no no I think that should be fine because this is a high poly we don't need to worry about that What do I call that? Mount. Let's see what this looks like. Computer's about to take off. There you go. 
get that nice kind of bevel on it, uh, but at the same time, um, yeah, you still get that kind of lip in. So it looks like it's metal there. Um, okay, so the next thing I can do is actually include the globe, which would be great. Let's try that again. Now I've got a texture on here, which I'm just going to use as a base. So I'm just going to import that in and call this, uh, where is it? It's here. Oh, I, sh I thought I showed you earlier. Um, I just basically found a different image, which was a bit more wrapping. Um, and then I just made it square and just kept these triangles. So I just got a new sphere and just took it from there basically. Didn't do any UVs to it and it seems to have worked a lot better than than it was. Um, the plan is to actually get um, a Holly to, to build me a uh, world map which is a bit more hand painted basically. A bit more detail. So this is just a temporary fix um, just for the time being. Um, but yeah, so it's just using the UVs of a standard um, of a sphere so I just created a sphere and there you go and I just used that um, I was saying earlier on eyeballs um, you could do it from the front which is fine because all you're going to see is the front of the eyeballs and it's the same with more basic stuff I saw a tutorial on um, making a it was like a little smiley face with the yellow texture and all, all the person did was they, they UV mapped from the front and then yeah so it's a bit of a cheap way of doing it, but like you said from the last time, we were having so much difficulty with the um, spherical mapping and stuff like that. So um, yeah, it's, it's kind of worked, um, but I'll probably be having Holly actually paint me a, a, pro, a, a nicer, more a higher resolution um, map. Now the only other thing we could do, if, no, cause that, no. Yeah, we could actually make the texture instead of it being 1024 square pixel, we could do it 1024 by 256, which means it's longer and there might be more resolution in it. Um, but again, I'll give that a test in a minute because um, uh, I've got plenty of time. Let's just drop this in. It's not the best. The only thing I would say, let's... Do we need it to be that rough? I, I don't know, actually. Let's, let's have a look at the reference. Ah, uh, it's... Okay, it's not, it's not that shiny. That's a bit too shiny. Um, but it is... It's kind of got a bit of a shine to it, these materials have. Um, on there. So, yeah. The only thing I would say is, I think I'm going to go back to the globe texture and have a look at how dark it is, because at the moment I just don't think, yeah, so let's let's have a look at that. Um, the brass I think is fine, I think. It's looking alright. Uh, let's have a look at the wood. I think the wood might be a bit too thingy. Um, let me just grab that. Just making sure the wood grain is going the right way. I 
I would prefer uh, let's delete this mask about mask so I think the wood should be going that way for those So it's about going around and fixing these little issues that you may come encounter with. Uh, I don't know what that is. Okay, so yeah. So any other ones that need to do ah uh, yeah this this will be cool. Oh Okay, that's fine. We can do this. It's one good thing about this, you can actually do it based off um faces instead, so it doesn't matter if the UVs are facing the wrong way, we can fix that. We don't need to go back into um, substance, um, not substance, mayor to fix that. Okay, that's fine, that's fine, you're enough, that's fine. Okay. That's looking a bit better. Um, what we, uh, the color wants that, right, okay, so. If I just bring up my reference, I can color sample that, which is pretty cool. And then, I can color sample that, which is a bit grayer than I thought, so let's, Hmm, not sure. I think that's all right. I think all the other woods uh, in in the scene are quite that color, so it'd be good to get some kind of like cherry out on there. Um, no, I'm just gonna play around with some of this dirt, which is where are you? Yeah, which is this one here. Now this has got uh, just a standard dirt, um, so I can change. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. So the next thing for me to do is to um, sort out the line map for this um, and then get it inside the engine and see what it looks like. So uh, yeah, that's the next thing we're going to do. Um, so for this, I'm just going to make a... So I've got these. This is kind of how I'm um, grouping things at the moment. So this is my construction props. And this is basically everything that's got all the layer, uh, the different um, uh, exports and that sort of stuff like, as you can see here, yeah, low poly, high poly. Um, and what we're going to do is just duplicate that and bring this up to uh, props final. And I'm going to uh, combine it all. Uh, I'm just going to hide that because I don't need that now. Uh, and then just bring this back up and call this globe uh, freeze history. So this is one object. Um, so I'm going to need to set out the light map because at the moment there isn't one. So we're going to go over to my UV editor, grab the copy new UV sheet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use something called layout. Now my grid is already set to the right uh, density, which was one divided by one two eight. Um, so now, with with this object selected, um, and this is you do this at the end. 
when you're about to bring your object inside of um, Unreal, this is the time to do it. Not when you're constructing it or baking or doing anything like that. Always do this at the end. Um, if I go to layout and change it to legacy, you can see that it's now, I'm already set to one to eight because that's my calculation. Click apply. What that's done is based off that calculation, the density of the light maps inside of Unreal, what we're gonna use. Now, don't get me wrong, you can scale up and down, that's fine. Um, and it shouldn't give you too much of an error, uh, uh, any errors. Um, but these are two pixels apart, basically, these shells are now. So it should be able to um, build the light maps. Now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna bring this to the ground, the pivot. And I'm gonna freeze, delete history, and this is my construction folder so this is where i do all my baking and that sort of stuff so but for this i'm going to actually bring it into the study Oops. i'm going to call it globe hmm Yes, okay. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna bake these texture maps out. So file, export textures. Now these um, smart materials that I've already made, these were made so that I can do this process quite quickly because I've got a lot of props to um, get through. Now I can show you how I made them um, in a minute, but yeah, so these are already, these are ones that I've made myself um, using different layers and that sort of stuff to just help my process uh, work. So if you've got a material that you can always use, you can then create a smart material and use that over and over again. That's the best way to work for it. Uh, no padding. I'm gonna use PSM, which is the one that I made, which is here, as you can see here. Make sure it's a target. <coughs> reason why we use targets is because the you can hold an alpha channel in there with them so that's good I'm gonna change this resolution down I think make sure I'm exporting in the right place so let's grab this Mayor Cenotaph images. Uh, images it will be. And if I okay, and export. Click OK. So we're now going to open up uh, Unreal. Go through Epic. You see my very clean desktop. Minus these two things. I'm actually going to get rid of that then. Okay, so let's open up Cenotaph. Oh, my laptop's about to take off. It's not doing anything serious. Uh, ignore the sci-fi floor. Um, I was doing a demonstration for um, the first years the other day, and uh, we were using a sci-fi floor that I had to build a material. Um, but yeah, I'm just leaving it in the uh, Cenotaph project just to see if anybody notices it. Um, so let's, uh, let's import the textures. So this will be... Okay. 
Okay. And let's just um, go to the materials. And from the uh, environmental master, I'm just going to create a material instance. I'm going to call this globe map. And the same with this as well. Create material instance. We're going to call this globe. I'll show you this uh, in a minute how this works. Um, I've shown the first years actually the other day. Okay, so uh, what I need to do is grab the base color, grab the normal, and grab the PSN. Gonna five. I'm just gonna open up the level as well, which would be great. Where I Here's the scene. Um, so yeah, firstly, what we're gonna do is after this is let's find this browser asset. Um, that's um, that's a really cool thing. I forgot that was a thing. Uh, Reimport. There we go. There's our um, scene. Let's just have a look at the line map density on it. So, okay, it's a bit too high. What we set to? Um, yeah, it's a bit better. Um, we might. Okay, and uh, one of the cool things. Let's grab. Um, no. No, 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 no. Okay, and where's the uh, globe map? Well, my laptop's about to take off. I do apologize about the sound. Um, nothing I can do right now. Um, yeah. Uh, I think everything's still fine. I think we're still um, My internet's still going. I think we're still streaming. I think uh, Hello, I haven't crashed I don't think No, we're still live. I just don't know why. That's not working. Hmm. Anyway. Uh, just quickly do something a minute. Ah, Tommy, you followed me. Um, AI in games followed me. Uh, that's good. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know why why the music's decided to die. Let me just uh, give that another go. Um, yeah, again, I don't know why the 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 pop ups aren't working for the um, follow, unless I'm just kind of missing them. But yeah, um, thanks uh, for telling me I'm still alive. I'm just panicking a little bit because, uh, like on Friday when I was testing this out with my Algat, um, the HD uh, streaming card on my Xbox, um, within like five minutes my stream just cut out. It just died, and I'm like, right, okay. And I think we were ha I was having a lot of trouble last a couple of weeks ago with this as well. And I don't know whether it's because Virgin's doing some maintenance on the um, on the lines and that sort of stuff. But anyway, it doesn't help. Uh, but anyway, so, okay, that's that, that's that, and that's that. 
Now, you probably can't see it, but this is what I'm just working on here. So it's just like um, a, uh, a material editor that I've got um, for the thing. So yeah, it's really hard to work on one screen uh, when you're doing game dev. Anybody playing any um, decent games at the moment? Well, I say decent. Anybody playing any games at the moment that they're really enjoying? Okay, so there we go. So we've got the globe in. It's kind of pretty much ready. Um, next thing I need to build is this, uh, which is like a, a, a side cabinet. Um, it's going to be used over here as well. Um, I've got to build the lights so that we can, they're not just looking thingy. There's a lot of artwork on the walls as well. Uh, but in terms of big props to be built, the last ones are the sideboard and these chairs. Now, I don't know what I'm going to build for these chairs yet. I haven't had a look and done any research on on account of the chairs. Obviously, I've got the couches already. Uh, and yeah, so we're just going to go... Oh, I always keep forgetting. I need to build the doors as well. No, when is Doom out? Um, I mean, I've, I, play, I played the new one. Um, I played the uh, uh, Eurogamer um, back in September. Was it October? One of those days. Um, I'm not a Doom fan, but I thought it was a very Doomy game, if that makes any sense. Okay, cool. Yeah. I don't know. If it comes out on Game Pass later on in the year, I'll probably pick it up. Um, um, that's what I seem to be doing at the moment, is just like picking up Game Pass games um, and playing them once they've come out, basically. I don't know why I'm going around the scene like this. This is just me procrastinating. Um, turn that off. <coughs> but yeah, no, I. It was very doomy. If that, if that's a, if that's a good review. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, was there anything I was gonna fix? Um. Okay, I'm gonna save this. Save as. Uh, art, substance. Yeah, I mean, if you're a fan of Doom, you're going to enjoy it. Like, because um, it is, it's um, like um, the, I think it was for me, I was struggling with one of the mechanics, um, but Tommy, who was with me, who was a Doom fan anyway, he um, he enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, it was, um, he enjoyed the, the demo that they had on, um, at Eurogamer. So yeah, if you're a Doom fan, you're probably going to enjoy it more than likely. Uh, anybody getting Animal Crossing? I know two extremes there a little bit, but yeah, thought I'd ask. Uh, Save globe. Where are you? Save failed. I've never played a um, an Animal Crossing game, so I don't know what. I I I, sh I really don't know what it is. Um. So 
I might, for the first time, pick it up. Um, to be fair, yeah, uh, I've got a Switch. Uh, I'm playing Pokemon um, Sword at the moment. Um, Point fail to save, can't serialize empty sit what image from Oh oh you stupid Okay this is not good. Um I know the reason why. Let's just delete that. And Yeah it's not good. I know why, don't worry, bear with me. Um, I know why it's not saving. Uh, let's reload, relocate. Um, is there any other games that you, th you guys think I should be playing? Um, always, always good to expand the library. Um, I'm playing um, on and off. I've been playing Civ 6 a little bit, um, mainly um, uh, trying to get some of the achievements for playing some of the sieves. Uh, I also may have um, uh, Yeah, so been playing a little bit of Civ 6 um, Mainly Call of Duty. I I, I am so sorry um, but Yeah, I've been mainly playing Call of Duty uh, Right focus map do, 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 do this should fix it he says he hopes. That didn't fix it. This might fix it. Okay, now uh, file, save as, globe. That's fine. Did that save? Woo, fixed it. Uh, so that was an issue with the, uh, I basically deleted the original globe texture and it was having a hissy fit because it was like you deleted it where is it we need to save this with this uh, with this project what are you playing at so i just fixed it luckily okay so the music streaming uh, thing i use called pretzel isn't working at the moment uh so that's always good um okay so the next thing i need to do is I've got a typewriter to do, but that's going to take a long time. It's a lot of detail, and I don't think my Padlet's back. Is it back? Come on. Is it there? Ah, oh, it's come back. Oh, phew. Whew. It's back. <laughs> that was a... I am so sorry, Holly, for blaming you earlier. Uh, it wasn't you. It was Padlet being um, rubbish. Um, but it's back and there we go um, So I think the next thing to do would be I think This sideboard so let's have a look for uh, Victorian Victorian side table No, it's not side table side Anybody in chat think like a side board? No. Hmm. I don't know what to call this. Um. Hmm. 
I really don't know what to, what they were called. Side tables? No, side table is this. So that's a side table. And we got music back. So that's a side table. So that's not what it is. Side bookcase? I don't know. Let me have a quick look. can all look for side tables. Ah, this is what I want. Something like that, in essence. Wide. Gonna shop for furniture here, it's fine. How much is this? Alright. For a moment then I thought it was over like five hundred quid then. Okay. Um what are we doing? I don't think they were called that. Let's just throw all the words in. S side cabinet. If I could spell cabinet right. Oh, I think I think we're onto a winner here. Something like that. That's what we're after. Yeah, this is roughly what we're after. Side cabinet. So yeah, this is what we're after. Um, but we just need to figure out which one to build. I like that one. Ooh, I do like that one. Okay, if this has got enough uh, reference images, we're gonna build this one. I think it is. Maybe not have the glossiness, but I like the glass cabinet bit. And I also like the um, curvature on it. So maybe not as much, I think the pattern work we can get away with. The wood, I think, maybe not as detailed. I think this is going to be... <laughs> Pardon me. Um, if Tommy's watching, I don't think we can buy this for the office. I'm going to put this on Padlet. As a, as a maybe. Again, the only issue I've got is that there isn't as much side shots as I would like. There's these nice top shots, which have the pattern work and you can see it, which is gonna be quite easy to do. But what is missing? Oh, I like this, this is really nice. Oh God, that's, I didn't see this. That might be interesting to do. Anyway, let's keep looking. Oh, I mean, we've got this one, which again would be similar. You got these square ones. Oh, that's nice. They're nice. Hmm. Found a nice steady five viewers in the chair in the uh, thing, which is nice. Uh, normally don't get that many. Okay, and that's interesting, but quite. Oh, 
sorry. Keeps coming back to this one. I like it. That one's not too bad. Oof. A lot of detail. Maybe not that one. Anybody joining the stream now, I am not just shopping for Victorian um, uh, furniture here. I'm generally looking for some to model at the moment for, oh, hello, I like that. Okay, that's interesting. I know it's square though. And yes, definitely rich. I'm shopping for my new house. It's gonna be just cladded in Victorian furniture. Thanks for the abuse. You come on my stream one time and then you come and just abuse me. Well, I say abuse me, you're just telling me. Is it? No, I don't think this one's French, you know. Oh no, is it French? I thought you were saying it was French. No, I don't know whether it's French or not. Good website, I'll give me that. Ooh, sorry. Mm. Oh. I, the issue I've got with this one is that it doesn't have enough uh, reference images because you can't really see uh, the pattern work here. Um, and yeah, so we're not going to go with that one, I don't think. I, I still think we're going to. I think I'm going to make this one, I think. It's going to take ages. I mean, you could go simple like that. That would that would work. Um, but is it going to be interesting to look at? I mean, have a look at the rest of the room. Um, it's going to need to kind of stand out a little bit. Although it needs to be longer, really. So. Maybe, maybe uh, this one, it is smaller, um, which fits here. And then we've got a longer one here, which is more drawers and that sort of stuff. Um, maybe that's the carving curves. Um, interesting. We could use um, the bend tool that just allows us to kind of bend them uh, into shape how we want them. Uh, we could extrude along the curve as well. So I could set up a curve like the, I'll demonstrate now. It's just easier. No, don't do that. So I could set up a curve like this. Okay, it's not the best curve. Uh, and grab um, the door. So this is our door. Set this up. Rebuild. Where's rebuild? Ignoring this bit that is just deciding to not want to work. So we can do it that way. <coughs> Or we could do it this way. Uh, let's, uh, let's add some geometry in here. Get rid of that. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll fix that in a minute. That's uh, 
don't extrude for a minute. Uh, and then we could do a um, deform. Uh, so I'll just change it to the rig and tabby, a nonlinear bend. Um, let's just get rid of the UV editor here. We could do that as well. Um, I'm just thinking now. Where's where's the um, and the best way would be to extract English would be great, Matt. Um, best way would be to do extra um, build this basic shape. So build this um, so up in out. Around because this is going to be in bake. We're not gonna, we're not gonna model that at all. So it would be up, across, up, bevel. So you got that basic, and then extrude along a curve that I set up basically uh, inside of Maya, um, and that should work. Base uh, hopefully. So actually, let's do this and let let me build this right now. Uh, let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of this. So. How did we say that was looking? Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna save this image um, on the desktop. Uh, uh, I'm gonna bring this in here so I can actually see it. Because I'm only working with one screen at the moment, because my other screen is looking at uh, uh, chat. Um, I'm going to actually bring this in so that I can see it. Um, let's see what we got. Have we got a reference. Ref one. That's good. And I'm just going to bring in. All I did there was just delete um, the edges. So you no, know, I know I can actually work with this now and see, okay, oh, I need the edges here, so. It's quite straight. Um, so. I'm always pressing control delete to um, stop it from um, thinking. I think that might be a bit too much in terms of extreme wise. Just gonna maybe bring this up a slight bit. I still think, yeah, that's a bit too. Quite deep. Yeah. Okay, so we've got the um, this bit here. Um, I think it's best to go to here because I think this is actually a bit. This bit here is not. Well, it is the same, kind of, um, it's on there. 
Okay, so let's draw this curve out. Uh, have I got a top view? Proper top view, that is. No. So this is good anyway, because what we can do is, uh, I can rotate this now. Uh, and let me just duplicate that off as well. And what we can do is this. So we can Now, let's give this a go. Uh, where's my curves? Curves. I don't know, like, to get that curve, you can't really bevel that. Um, I mean, if it works first time, then I'll be happy. This might not work, you know. Ah. Yeah, it's not gonna work. Damn it. Yeah, no, it's just, I, unless with the extrude along the curve, the extrude along the curve should work. Um, if you were going to bevel it, where would you bevel it? Hmm. That's my thing. It's like, okay.
Hmm. Let's try and do. Um, yeah. Like, Rich, if, if you were going to bevel it, where would you actually bevel it? Because you seem bevel with a profile. They're saying that that kind of has worked um, in terms of looking at the kind of curve that we made using the curve tool. And then all I would do is, ah, okay, yeah, yeah, no, I, yeah, yeah, I can see where you're going from there. No, I, I tend to work in sections. Although luckily what's happened is that the the using the bend uh, tool in the non deformers is kind of given us the bend that we're actually after for it and it's now slotting in just right um, which doesn't always happen um, the only other thing you could do with extra extrude along a curve is um, I mean that's very good for pipes and um, cables one of the things you could do, I think there's an animation method where you could basically extrude, um, not extrude, but like place objects around a curve uh, based off the timeline. Um, but it's very long winded, like Rich said. Uh, Wonder if we can get to 10 viewers. Oh, nine viewers. Oh, that's close. <laughs> cool. Anybody know how to turn those notifications off?
Um, so you can see the room now on the stream. Um, anything that's grey, I've still got to build. Um, today, I think I'm going to be starting to wrap this up in a minute. Um, probably stream for about. Yeah, this yeah, this is just one room. Um, but luckily, the project itself is for the demo. It, there's there's not a lot of rooms that we're doing. So this is the main room we're doing for this. The only other room that I need to do after will be the hallway uh, leading out into the main door. Um, and then that's it, the rest of it will be closed off. Um, same with the um, actual cenotaph itself. So I've got to build this. Uh, save something. So yeah, so I've still got to build this, which is the main menu where, where you'll be able to access the levels from. Um, this is the cenotaph. So in this, there needs to be, um, I won't be doing the sculptures here. Uh, um, and then we've got a few dioramas that I need to build as well. Um, so still quite a bit to do on it. Um, I'm just trying to get this room done. Um, and then I may just get all the um, main props done for this and then come back and do all like the little books and that sort of stuff because sort of, like, I've got to fill this bookcase with stuff that's a little bit more interesting than just filling it full of books. Um, so yeah, so I'll come back and probably do that. Yeah, everything's uh, game ready. Um, uh, everything's got light maps, everything's um, ready to go. Some of the props that are more detailed, especially the camera and stuff, has all got LODs set up. So yeah, so everything's ready to ready to go game ready. It's just um, it's just actually finishing, finishing all these props off. There's only me working on the 3D side at the moment. So yeah, a bit of a, a bit of a slog, but we'll get there. The only thing we're probably going to need to do is reduce the texture sizes at the moment because the texture sizes are the same size as what I export out of Substance, so the 2048 by 2048. But again, it's easier to work high to low than low to high. So. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's just got something, something you've got to do, isn't it? It's not, it's not really like, oh yeah, I'm not going to make furniture ever. It's like, you can't even do that in re like real life. Like move house and you got a load of IKEA furniture that you need to make. So yeah, um, it's one of those.
Okay, so. Uh, we got a. Let's have a look at the front view on this one. Okay, so they're, they're the same posts. Beanbag. Seriously? Is that all you've got in your room as a beanbag, Rich? For anybody in chat, me and Rich know each other. We're um, um, uh, Rich is a fellow indie developer. A hammock. Really? You've got a hammock in your room. Do you know what? I've never tried to even get in one of the hammocks, uh, a hammock before. No way that's happening. What? Try try to see me getting into a hammock or having a hammock yourself. <laughs> oh. One good thing about this is it looks like it's one pane of glass, which means I don't need to have any wooden bits in between, which is nice. Um, hmm. If we get to here, I'll give this a go.
Oh, yes. I just realised what I forgot to do. I forgot to change that back down. Yeah. So I'm hoping. Yeah, there we go. Small problem. Bear with me. Because numpty, I've got to uh, lower that down. It should be fine now. There we go. Anyway, fix that problem. Um, so bring the door to about there. So let's. Let's extract those. build this. So I'm thinking, um, what's the middle? That's fine. Thinking about how thin is it looking? No, so we've got a bit of a gap here. So we need to make sure that we kind of adhere to that, this, this distance here between the two. So if I just go back and bring this out slightly and then do the same here. Is that roughly the same? Uh, something like that. I'm just going to delete this side. Because at the moment what we're going to do is we're just going to work on one bit of it and then go from there. So, um, by the looks of it, we've got this inlet bead. Okay. Now with this, I am going to do something. I'm just going to bring these UVs, merge them, and then we're going to fill the holes, just so I've got something to work with. Okay, um, let's have a look at this. Yeah, it looks like it's got a bevel inwards. So we'll do that. This may work, this may not work, we'll see. So we'll just flip it. No, we won't.
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ish. This might work, it might not. Let's see. I forgot to note down what the measurement curvature was for the other thing. This would have been so much easier if I actually made a note of what the... Ah! But, in theory that worked, I'm going to take that as a victory. <coughs> Except for I didn't measure it, so it now doesn't fit. Hmm. through okay so if I had taken the measurement of this using the bend deformer tool I could have actually fixed that problem but at the moment I can't I need to redo it so okay that's fine that's fine so let's try this again shall we Not too much of an issue. Because what we can do is just rebend this one, basically. There we go, there's your fix. Okay, so I'm gonna combine these. <coughs> oh. I think that might be a bit too extreme. There we go. Look 
the worst case is we can do this. It's not roughly. But it means I fixed the problem. There we go. Um, the only thing I'm not happy with is that bend. Maybe 65 is more than enough. I think, yeah, that's more than enough. You have to delete the history and freeze the transformations before you uh, move it. Because if you don't, and you've still got the bend tool activated, that's gonna happen, which could come up with some interesting shapes, but it's not what you want. So just make sure uh, you delete that. There we go. Oh, maybe not. Sixty. It's trial and error at this point. But the undo button is your friend. Let me just get rid of Bob. Bob's just in the way. There we go. That's a bit better. And we can just move this back into, he says, into position. Like so. And there you have it. as the kind of door frame. So yeah. Um, Probably just need to bring these in a bit. Cool. Well, I think I'm going to call the stream there um, for now. I'll leave this. I'll save this. I won't work on this, and I'll carry on working on this on the next stream. Um, going to be streaming over the next couple of weeks quite regular um, just so that any of my students can come in ask questions that sort of stuff um, again thank you for all the people who followed today um, and yeah so I think, I think uh, anybody really got any questions in the chat Okay, well, thank you for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time I go uh, live on the stream. Thanks.